What's up, Kyle? Back for two days. We're back. At this is this is going to be a fun week for for golf. Our home course. Yes. Yeah. Connecticut. I think I, I, I'm definitely going to be going one of the days, if not two. Uh, probably Saturday and maybe Sunday. That'd be awesome. So it should be fun. Yeah, it should be a fun time, especially after uh, no fans last year, and mm-hmm. they're, they're letting people get wasted on the golf course with the golfers again. The Travelers, though, is a good, a good uh, tournament. And and the, the tour guys freaking love it. Yeah. They're, they, um, there's all those condos that are surrounding the course, and uh, a lot of the families that live there will just, will, like, essentially sublet their house to them for the week so they can bring their families. Um, and I think they actually treat the caddies like human beings there, too, <laughs> which is which is very uncommon. Right. Um, but yeah, Travelers Championship, TPC River Highlands, Cromwell, Connecticut. It's a yep. Pete Dye course, par yep. seventy, six thousand eight hundred and forty-one yards. Short course. That's that's pretty short. Yep. They use uh, the, yeah, bent grass mixed with poana. Mm-hmm. Uh, the course records held by Jim Furyk. He shot that fifty-eight yes. in two thousand sixteen. Which yeah, was I was there that year. Insane. Not that not that day. Yeah. But, yeah, it was wild. And then past winners, last year, DJ won. The year before that was Ches Reavy. He had a Furyk-like day, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Bubba Watson, Spieth, yep. Knox, Watson again, Streelman. Uh, Bubba's won here three times. Yeah, Bubba loves this course. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys love this course, especially yeah, after looking... coming off that yeah, yeah. hard major. Yep. I'm looking at the scorecard right now. There are uh, some some short holes on this one, short par fours and pretty sh- easy par fives. Like I'm looking at uh, 15 is a 296 par four that, uh, like you said, DJ drove it. Um, is that last year? I think I think it might have been two years ago. Last year, and he drove over it. He hit right. it too far. Yeah, which is <laughs> I'm like. Like, what is DeChambeau going to hit on? Because you're starting, not only is it 296, but you're also starting elevated uh, in comparison to the hole. So it's, I think it plays like probably 270. He's going to hit a six iron. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to go pitching wedge. <laughs> Drive the green with a six iron. Yeah. On par four. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun weekend for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, but. And uh, yeah, so Deshambo will. This is going to be one of their one of the better fields that they've had here. I mean, they usually get some pretty uh, top guys. The field's but, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Starting off with the 10k range on DraftKings, we go D- DJ at 11.4. Uh, Bryson is 11.1. Brooksy is 10.7. Cantlay is 10.4, and Patrick Reed is 10,000. And I think uh, you have to have uh, either DJ or DeChambeau in every single one of your lineups this week. It's tough. Um, yeah. Is DJ going to care is the problem. I know he won it last year. Yeah. But he's coming off the U.S. Open where he didn't play all that well towards the end. He's played a, think, he's think, played a ton of weeks in a row. I think the U.S. Open was a look ahead for him for this week. <laughs> Maybe, but yeah, those top three like, guys. Yeah, looking at the list: Deshambo, DJ, and Brooks. I mean, there's a lot of win equity right there. Yeah, and Deshambo. I mean, he played like shit on Sunday, but before that, I mean, he was right in it. It was looking like he was going to win. I thought. Yeah. I thought for a while after Saturday, I thought he was going to win. Yeah. Um, pumped he didn't, <laughs> um, but yeah, right. I thought he was gonna pull it out. Um, he's gonna demolish this course. Yeah, yeah. There are. Uh, let's see here. The par five on the front is five seventy four, and there is. Let's see. That is the sixth hole. It's a slight dog leg to the right. But There's a lot of dog legs it's, here, actually. It's, it's wide open. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird uh, course in that it's like a, it's kind of like a circle, and then they have the 
the water on uh, there's a couple of little ponds here that you gotta watch out for uh, 13 is another f fun hole to watch where they gotta like he can that's a 523 par 5 he can definitely get on in 2 and uh, let's see where they tee off he can cut the so it's a dog leg to the right and if you I'm looking at where the water is if you take a straight shot from the tee box he can probably cut uh, maybe 70 or 80 yards off that and and get it you can definitely get on it too oh yeah most Very a lot of evil. guys will yeah um i think my favorite he, play 10k wise is going to be patrick cantley yeah he's playing solid golf this course he, fits him he's back yep he's back the course fits him really well um i love him at 10-4 when so many people are going to be taking the top three mm -hmm. i think you'll find some value and lower owner percentage in Patrick Cantlay and and Patrick Reed. People always sleep yeah. on Patrick Reed. Uh, he he finished nineteenth in the U.S. Open, right. top twenty. Yeah, um, he can awesome he always win. Uh, dropping down to the nines, ninety nine hundred is Paul Casey, all the way down to Joaquin Neiman at nine thousand. And mm -hmm. the number one play, I think it's pretty unanimous. He's going to be really chalky. Is Paul Casey? Yeah. Um, he's playing some really good golf lately. Uh, this course fits him really well. He likes playing here. Um, I, I'm going to have him, and I'm going to team him up yeah. with Patrick Cantlay. They're they're similar players too. On mm -hmm. top of it, um, I think they're good to pair together in that kind of game theory uh, wise. And then the rest of the nines are kind of interesting. Like Scotty Scheffler is a guy I like to play. I'm not sure if I'll get to him this week. Uh, Streelman, past winner here, but 9,400 yep. for Kevin Streelman. 9,400 is a lot for That was something that Kevin popped Streelman. up, but then I looked at his recent finishes, and he's 15th at the U.S. Open, 13th at the Memorial, 20th at the Charles Schwab, 8th at the PGA Championship. I right. mean, the guys. Right, so you're like, <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah, yeah. he's expensive, but he's, but he's also crushing it. Then Matthew Wolf looked like he was back, and then he shot a 74 on Sunday. Did not look back. Yeah. Uh, Tony Finau, I think that this is a good course for him. Uh, didn't yep. play well at the Open, but kind of irrelevant. Um, Abe Answer, hey, how about, another good how about, one. Was, Abe Answer at 9,100. That's the most expensive I've seen him in a long time. What do you think? He you, you taking him? He might have to, man. We love taking him at when he's in the seven to eight k range. Um, yeah, he just has two bad finishes in a row, which might scare people. Yeah, but yeah. but at a course like this, where it actually fits his game really well. Yeah, and then your boy Joaquin. Uh, the only thing that scares me is if you don't hit the greens here. Uh, scrambling is pretty difficult. It's probably the most difficult thing at this course. Right. And Joaquin kind of sucks at that, <laughs> but yeah. but he could go low. He's another guy who could go super low. So I typically right. like him in tournaments where the number is like minus twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but my picks from this range, I'm going to go Paul Casey and Kevin Streelman. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Streelman and screw it, I'll take answer as well. Yeah, got it, got it. All right, so. Moving on to the 8K range, uh, we start off with Bubba Watson, who I really like. Um, not so much. I would like him a lot more if he was like 8,600, but 89 is doable. He loves this course. Yep. He absolutely tears it up here uh, almost every year, and I don't really expect this year to be any different. I think he has some puts up some low scores and probably finishes in the top ten. Uh, and then moving down to little baby Harmon, <laughs> who the first time I saw him uh, probably five years ago, I was like, that guy's in the PGA. He's like four feet tall. <laughs> but he's another one. But he hit, but he hits at a freaking mile. He's another one uh, like Streelman, where I was like eighty eight hundred for Brian Harmon. I was like, that does that sounds too high. Then you look at his finishes, and you're like, right. oh, he's top, 
<laughs> top 20 in every tournament. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he likes his course, so. Yes. I think he's a good play this week. Yep. And then we go down to Cam Smith, uh, Charlie Ho, Charlie Hoffman, uh, Siwoo Kim, and then Justin Rose, Russell Henley, Harris English, uh, Leishman, and then Adam Scott rounds us out. And yes, then we're in the seven Ks after that. Cam Smith has been playing some bad golf. Uh, yes. I'm off of him right now until he figures it out. Yeah, I like Charlie Hoffman though, and Siwoo. I do I like Charlie Hoffman as well, quite a bit. I think for this range, I gotta go with Harmon and Rose. Harmon and Rose, huh? Are my two guys. I'm gonna go uh, Bubba Siwoo, but I also do like uh, Russell Henley. Um, I know he had a bad Sunday, but he ha- he was playing excellent. Um, Mark Leishman is a former winner here, but I don't love him. Um, yeah, I like I like Hoffman too. Hoffman, Siwoo, Bubba, and yeah. and then your boy. Uh, Brian Harmon. Uh, that takes us to the sevens, where uh, Garrick Higo is seventy nine all the way down. It's the biggest range as always to um, Taylor Gooch. Yeah, at seven thousand, um, top of this range. I really, really like Keegan. Um, of course, fits him really well. Uh, Higo actually might have a bounce back week after. Sucking at the U.S. Open, so I think he'll be low owned too. Because he coming off that win, people were high on him. He was a yeah. letdown. Now he might be primed to bounce back. Max Homa scares me, but I kind of like him. Yeah, Homa's been pretty hit or miss. Yeah, he has. Phil, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. What he, do, Phil. he does play this course pretty well, though. He does, but like so does everyone, right? It's not that hard. Then, but I do, I do definitely like uh, Keegan Bradley. He plays this course really well every year. Uh, he's a New England guy, and so he's always got like every year he's got the biggest uh, crowd following him. Yep. Like no matter who else is there. Like when Spieth and uh, Rory were there a couple of years ago, didn't matter. Everyone was loving Keegan. This range is filled with guys I like. Cameron Tringali, like him. Yeah. Uh, Harold Varner. This this yep. course should set up set up great for him. Uh, yeah. He loves uh, he's an approach guy, second shot guy, mm-hmm. and this course is all about the second shot. Um, then Kevin Na, he could always win. Um, Aaron Wise has been playing really good golf. Ian Poulter, mm-hmm. another guy who I like uh, at this course particularly, and he's been playing some good golf. Stewie Sink, old man Sink, old man is just Stewie. someone I could see winning in Connecticut. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Ricky Fowler. What to do with Ricky? Is he back? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's back, but he does usually. I've I've seen him play here a couple times. He does usually play this course really tight. And then there's guys like Chris Kirk, who we were like super high on for a while. Um, Sneds, who always can go low. Another guy like I, we were talking about earlier, who I like at tournaments that. Are gonna have a low, really low number. Yeah, uh, Kisner, he's a guy that I like playing in Connecticut, but I don't know about him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the min seven thousand, I really like Pat Perez, and I really like Doug Gim. I do like Doug Gim at seven K. Love Pat Perez, like Pat Perez. Yeah, yeah. That's just a guy who's who's gonna top ten in Connecticut. <laughs> He's a CT top ten kind of guy. Yeah. And then moving down to the dregs of this week, uh, starting off with uh, Richie Warensky at sixty nine hundred, and then uh, looks like Steve Stricker's out, uh, going all the way down. To Ryan Brem at six K. 
Is anyone jumping out at you here, Kyle? There's a couple guys that I do like in the sixes this week. Um, so Lipsky, uh, Corn Fairy guy, played yep. well at the Palmetto. Uh, he could tear this course up. Then there's Keith Mitchell. I'm just a Keith Mitchell guy. Uh, yeah. He's boomer bust. He could go low. Um, dropping down a little bit more. Ryan Moore always plays this course well, but he hasn't yeah. been playing great golf, so I, I'm going to stay away from him, actually. Um, Benny Ons can't get it together, so I am not can't can't get a go on him. Yeah. Uh, but we dropped down even more. Austin uh, Eckrope, he's another Corn Ferry guy. I think he could go low. Harry Higgs is way down here. I actually I was just looking at Harry Higgs. I actually like Harry Higgs at sixty five. Yes. And then the lowest I'm gonna go. Uh, and then our boy uh Burgoon and Kadira. Burgoon, another guy like we were saying, if we wanna mash all these players together, Burgoon is a guy who plays well when the the number's really low. So yes. if you're just following that narrative, Burgoon's a guy. But uh lowest I'm gonna go. And there's two guys at 6,400 in Vincent Whaley and uh, Kevin Chappell. I like them both, especially Kevin Chappell. Yeah. Um, Kevin Chappell's been too cheap for a while. He makes he makes a lot of cuts. Mm. Um, so I think 6,400, you got a guy in Chappell who will definitely make the cut. For sure. Did you um, Have you made any lineups yet? I have. Okay. I made one as well. I have made two lineups, one a cash and one a tournament. Uh, I'll go with the cash lineup first. Okay. I start with uh, Patrick Cantlay, then go down to Paul Casey, drop down to Keegan Bradley, then Ian Poulter, Ricky mm-hmm. Fowler, and Pat Perez. Uh, that's we have a uh, yeah we're have a couple similarities in there. I like this this one also for uh, for cash. Starts off with uh, Patrick Cantlay, and then going down to Abe Anser, uh, and then Bubba Watson, Keegan, uh, Pat Perez, and then finishing off with Bronson Burgoon. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then this is my more tournament style team. Um, Starting it off, most expensive player, uh, Kevin Streelman. Uh, and then going down a little bit to Tony Finau, uh, Bubba, Charlie Hoffman, Ooh. Dougie Gim, and Keith Mitchell. I like that. Um, so there's a, a cash and a tournament team for you guys. And... Scott, your, yours was a, almost a mix with Bronson Burgoon coming in as their tournament play, your kicker. The rest, <laughs> rest of it, straight cash. Straight cash, boy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of ran out of. Uh, I ran <clears throat> ran out of cash after Pat Perez because uh, I was a little bit higher in the. So like Bubba Watson's an eighty nine hundred. He might as well be nine k. Like right. between him and Abe Answer, it's. Uh, and then Cantlay, I was left uh, with almost zero dollars left, so I had to go. Keegan was the next highest I could go, and then had to go Pat Perez and Bronson Burgoon. I like it, but I, I I do think all those all those guys uh, do well here. I do too. Um, were you able to look at any bets yet? Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yeah, so there's a couple things uh, that I see that are interesting. Um, one is Cam Smith to make the cut. Uh, no is plus one seventy five. Um, that stood Cam out to Smith. me. Yes, and I also like uh, uh, Garrick Higo to miss the cut at plus one sixty. I could also see. Um. Uh, I could also see Ricky missing the cut here at plus one seventy five. Yeah, he might. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at um, 
top college players. So by college, top okay. former UNLV player. It's between Charlie Hoffman, Adam Scott, and Ryan Moore. I like Charlie Hoffman at plus 110. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, we have – they also released uh, some of the first-round head-to-heads, which we could get into a couple of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want. So, yeah, first rounds are kind of tough, but – couple that are jumping out at me are, um, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Bronson Burgoon, minus 140 over Hudson Swafford. I like that. Yeah, I never even, I don't even know who Hudson Swafford is. He misses the cut. He's been on the tour forever, but he always misses. And uh, this one is a little bit tougher. Brian Harmon or Scott – Brian Harmon minus 115, Scotty Scheffler. Oh, that is tough. Minus 105. That's a stay away for sure. I like this one. Uh, Ian Poulter versus Stewie Sink. I like Poulter. And it's minus 114. Yeah. That's That's juicy. Ooh. All right. So, day one, Bubba Watson plus 105, Keegan Bradley minus 125. Oh, oh. I like Bubba Watson. That's a so close one, but yeah. Money. That's close. That's a good That's a good matchup. Yeah. I could see that going either way. But I do like yes. Bubba as well. Bubba is a beast. Yes. Especially here. Yeah. Also, uh, another one that is jumping out at me is Cam Smith uh, versus Keegan Bradley. Oh, I like Keegan in this one. Yeah, for sure. Wait, I like him a yeah. lot. What's that line? Yeah. Uh, Keegan's minus 120. Oh, we got to hammer that. Yeah. <laughs> we got to hammer that one. and then Empty I, out the old 401k. DraftKings has uh, Bubba Watson versus Emiliano Grillo. Bubba Watson minus 120. I like Bubba in that. Yeah, me too. Another yeah. one we could hammer. Uh, yeah, I was looking away at the classic nationality props. I love that. And a couple uh, long shots I like. The, the Canadians. So there's no one great playing from the Canadians. Mackenzie Hughes played good last week, but he's always a hit or miss player. Uh, there's Adam Hadwin, Nick Taylor, and then Roger Sloan, who I, I think is worth a bet at plus 450. Um, just because the field's not great. Mm. And then the Asians, Siwoo is plus 150, CT Pan's plus 400, Benny Ann, 550. But then you could get Satoshi Kodaira at plus 900. Oh my god. <laughs> That's why. They're long shots. And then yeah. uh English Paul Casey minus one ten is pretty good, I think. Dude, they let you do for this week I don't know if they do these every week or is it or it could be just um that they're not out when we usually do these on Mondays. But they have uh exotics oh, out god. for this. So you can do, like, first and second uh, in order. And I was looking at some of the ones that are, uh, they do trifectas. Oh, God. <laughs> How are you supposed to hit that? Well, the lowest odds are plus 35,000. <laughs> so they're, they're crazy, crazy, crazy. But, um, and I don't know if... <clears throat> any of the uh, like you can't just pick the, so the thing that sucks about this is you can't just pick like who you want who you want it's all pre-selected right which kind of sucks but having said that I do kind of like uh, they have a couple that are this one is plus 250,000 Patrick Reed, Scotty Scheffler, Abe Answer. Patrick Reed, 
Yeah. That's how much? 80? Plus 250. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the exotic. I think, I think, I think Bovada might just send someone to kill you if you win. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting that check. Yeah. Or, or they have, um, let me see here. They got a couple good ones. Um, like Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Scotty Scheffler, plus 75,000. Uh, and then DJ Kepka, Fina, plus 75,000. Uh, this is like, oh, here we go. DeShambo, Reed, Scheffler, plus 100K. There's some nice ones in here. These are all I can't I can't get behind betting any of these. <laughs> I just can't. Just straight fucking DJ. This is just burning money. It's yeah. impossible to pick the winner of a golf tournament. <laughs> Let alone right. the top three. Right. Let alone first, second, <laughs> and third. Yeah. How pissed would you be if if you had Bryson DeChambeau winning? Uh, and then DJ in second, and then Cantlay in third, right. and then and then like fucking Garrick Higgo came in second, <laughs> right. Cantlay came in third, yeah. fucking jump off a cliff. Uh-huh. Fuck yeah, can't do any of those. I could get behind betting like uh, Paul Casey straight up to win or Cantlay straight up to win. Um, yeah, Cantlay's got a good shot this week. Yeah, he does, and so does Casey. They both yeah. um, they both are great picks this week. We're Trust me, we're not the only ones to say it. <laughs> um, I know yeah. a bunch of people are going to be on them. They're going to be chalk. Um, but sometimes it's good to eat the chalk. It's good for you. Sometimes sometimes you need to... Chalk, chalk's high in calcium. Sometimes like you need bones. to eat the chalk. And then diversify your lineup somewhere else. Because yeah. they're chalk for a reason. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like... Game of Thrones. Why I hate Game of Thrones. Everyone likes it. <laughs> Everyone likes it for a good reason. It's because it's good. All right, buddy. Uh, you want to end it on that? Yep. All right. All right. We'll see you for UFC we'll tomorrow. Do, uh, UFC tomorrow, bud. Right. Take care.